above the vestibule at facade level on the Seine side. The station's architect, Victor Lelou, had indeed created false attics to hide the great metal vessel from the eyes of passers-by. We recovered the station's attic, in a way, on y a mis the impression is fair, and closed the smaller rooms. rooms. After the architects, it was the engineer's turn to face the ever more complex challenges. For the station's metamorphosis to be truly successful, they would need to innovate to resolve the problems linked to the superstructure itself. For the station, as for the museum, the monument's prized asset is its vast nave. But this huge volume of more than 100,000 cubic meters also has a major drawback. Noise. The problem of the nave is that a grand volume like this is very resonant. There are echo effects. We realized very quickly that we could not present a museum with hundreds and hundreds of visitors without generating an absolutely infernal noise. To limit the resonance of the nave, the acoustician in charge of the project would have to design 40,000 sound attenuators or mufflers to be discreetly hidden in the scenery. The acoustician did a wonderful job. He did a reference to a very old technique used in the state walls of old theatres. The technique of acoustic vases or jars is also found in medieval churches. Empty pottery embedded in the walls to absorb the echoes. These cavities are hidden in the 1600 staff ceiling coffers, which decorate the nave. The ceiling coffers were eventually identical in the 1980s. And during this phase, the architects took the opportunity to add technique. While restoring the cost of the coffers, we cut into the angle into the rear of the coffers, where it's quite invisible. Large volumes of plaster are not visible. 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 Large volumes of plaster the famous double skin. These sound attenuators manage to reduce visitor noise. But the monument's single superstructure poses yet another problem. Because even today, under the visitor's feet, trains continue to run at Orsay. The station will never ever be closed, and today it's doing very well. It's still extremely active. Today, suburban RER trains have succeeded commuter trains. Since 1979, the station has been located in an underground part of the monument. Of the 15 tracks of the former station, the four closest to the Seine have been conserved and converted to create this station. So the place retains traces of its past. When we are in the RER today, you are where the station always was. You can even see the cast iron pillars on the platform. We just kept it so. The little modernizations here and there haven't harmed it. The RER station and the museum are two parts of the same monument and are therefore linked by the same metal framework. And the problem with metal is that it resonates enormously. La charpente métallique a un inconvénient, c'est la transmission des vibrations. Lorsqu'il y a un train qui passe, les voix résonnent. Ça crée notamment des vibrations au niveau des œuvres. Les vibrations, ça peut endommager la surface d'une peinture, par exemple. Ça peut déstabiliser un objet fragile ou une sculpture. On the ground side of the museum, Riverside, some 1,500 meters squared of the exhibition space sits on top of the underground RER station. And the floor that separates the two spaces is extremely thin, just 12 centimeters. In 2018, the problem was solved by designing innovative walls on which to hang paintings, anti-vibration mounts. 
On s'est inspiré de constructions dans des zones sismiques assez fortes, donc aussi bien en Italie qu'au Japon, où en fait la construction des bâtiments peut se faire sur des ressorts. At first glance, these picture hangers look like conventional walls. But in fact, if you dig deep, there's much more. Inside, a complex structure equipped with springs at the top. Above, a hull which rests on the springs. It's the internal structure that moves and absorbs the vibrations. The hull remains immobile as it is suspended 10 centimeters from the ground. Le fait de ne pas toucher le sol permet d'isoler la vibration, la vibration qui émane de la gare sur la surface où sont accrochées les œuvres. These high-tech picture rails manage to secure the works, but you have to be very careful when hanging them, because with their frame, these pictures can weigh up to 100 kilograms. Today, exceptionally, we were able to witness the setting up of the temporary exhibition dedicated to the painter James Tissot. Most works are protected from the front by de l'accrochage de Tissot, c'est que certaines œuvres sont très lourdes. Glass, On a différents types de like systèmes d'accrochage pour que l'œuvre ne puisse pas évidemment tomber. Of polycarbonate cladding. It takes six weeks to carefully hang the 80 paintings in the exhibition. For these treasures over a century old are very fragile. To protect them from shocks, the paintings are even equipped with integrated pads. La plupart des œuvres sont protégées par l'avant par un verre particulier qui s'appelle le mirror guard, qui est un verre anti-reflet, un petit peu comme un pare-brise de voiture, et également par l'arrière avec ce qu'on appelle un caisson tampon, qui est un revêtement en polycarbonate. The Musée d'Orsay possesses around 6,000 paintings, and many are equipped with pads. But that is not enough. The entire monument must guarantee an optimal environment for works. Le musée abrite des trésors, donc il faut contrôler le, le climat, il faut avoir une température stable, il faut avoir une humidité stable. C'est un défi technique considérable, surtout quand on voit le volume en fait, de la gare. Ça a été vraiment réfléchi, pensé dans les années 80. Le musée était vraiment à la pointe de la technologie quand il a ouvert. Since its birth in 1986, the entire operation of the museum has thus been managed in real time by computer. This is to ensure the safety of the works, but also that of the public in such a gigantic monument. Some 7,000 sensors are distributed throughout the monument to detect the slightest anomaly. L'ensemble des espaces est contrôlé par des sondes et par des relevés, en fait, qui sont directement conditionnés et étudiés au niveau de la centrale. The surveillance unit is located in the basement of the museum. Here, all the sensor readings are displayed on the screens. They show the temperature levels, but also the air conditioning, the lighting and the condition of the escalators. Ce sont des informations qui arrivent en temps réel. La centrale de surveillance est vraiment le cerveau du musée. C'est vraiment le, le cœur sensible du musée. These screens are the visible face of a centralized avant-garde system where everything is managed by powerful computer units, automata. In the museum basements, they remotely control a vast network of technical installations with no fewer than 30 air conditioning units capable of ensuring an airflow of 620,000 cubic meters per hour. L'automate va traiter ces informations-là et il va permettre d'envoyer des commandes, par exemple, ouvrir ou fermer des vannes, au chaud, au froid. The computer system used in Orsay is far from typical for a conventional museum. It is more like that of an advanced industrial building. And when it was inaugurated in 1986, the monument was already far ahead of its time. Nous avions cette installation uniquement dans 200 endroits au monde, ici donc à Orsay, mais aussi à Kourou, euh, sur le centre spatial de lancement des fusées Ariane. The museum has always been technologically advanced to adapt to this huge building, as well as to its monumental works. 
Today, an exceptional event takes place in Orsay. A giant canvas measuring 6.6 .6 meters by 3.15 is being taken from its frame. It is a burial at Ornon, a masterpiece painted by Gustave Courbet in 1850. A team from the Musée de France Research and Restoration Center carries out an x-ray of this painting. The extraordinary size of the canvas imposes a particular system. La grande the painting, taille the du tableau size, nous a obligé à faire une mission, mission sur place, chose qui est relativement is exceptionnelle, parce que la, because most la majorité des, des tableaux euh, viennent en général au laboratoire. To achieve this without any risk, the operation takes place at night. With a carefully delimited security perimeter around the X-ray generator. Le fait de travailler sur un grand format, euh, ça demande beaucoup de temps parce que ne peut pas faire une seule acquisition, on ne peut pas faire une radio globale. It took 51 shots to reconstruct the whole of this painting. X-rays then make it possible to reveal the invisible, the real state of the canvas, or even the painter's secrets. We have lots of new information. We have no idea what was there until we did the next radiography. Closer to the latest technological advances, the museum is in constant flux, with collections continuing to grow richer each year, and a monument that constantly adapts the better to enhance them. Depuis l'ouverture du musée d'Orsay en 1986, en fait, le musée a constamment évolué et il évolue de façon permanente. C'est vraiment un organisme vivant. Once again, the musée d'Orsay is not done with its multiple metamorphoses.